You're watching The Pulse, your weekly guide to global health on Al Jazeera. I'm Shireen El Fekhi. Now, when most of us go to hospital, it's in the hope we'll come out better than when we went in. But a growing number of hospital patients are going home with an unwanted souvenir, a bacterial infection. Roughly one in 10 patients in rich countries catch an infection while in hospital. And in the developing world, a quarter of patients are going home with more than they bargained for. The UK is one of the countries struggling to control its hospital-based infections. The Pulse went to see this latest Battle of Britain against the superbugs. I had a triple bypass operation and whilst in there I caught MRSA. A seven-day stay in hospital for Tom Snowball turned into seven weeks after he was infected with the bacteria MRSA. I'd either caught it in intensive care unit or in theatre. For the first fortnight I was not on this planet. It was only after I came out of the hospital that my daughter told me that I was a very, very ill man. The infection was so severe that doctors had to resort to surgery to drain it. I had my chest opened four times. And in October last year, I had my chest opened for a fifth time. And when I came out, I was given £4,000 of antibiotic. And it cleared the MRSA up altogether. I do not have MRSA. I am one of the lucky ones that are still alive. Dr. Alison Holmes is Director of Infection Prevention and Control at London's Hammersmith Hospital. She sees cases of MRSA and other drug-resistant infections every day. So this is our general ITU at um, Hammersmith. And like many ITUs in London, it's extremely busy. At the moment, it's full. And it's full of some very complex and very ill patients. Some of them we can isolate. We have isolation rooms over here. Um, but unfortunately, with the number of resistant um, organisms and infections we see, that three isolation rooms are frequently completely inadequate. All the things that we're doing to patients to support them are in fact causing risks in terms of infection acquisition. Every time we put in a line, whether it's in the back of the hand or into the major vessels in the, in the neck, um, we're breaching skin, which puts people at risk of acquiring infection. Each year, roughly 100,000 patients in England catch an infection while in hospital. More than 5,000 die from the complications. Of every 50 people infected, one is hit with MRSA, dubbed the superbug. MRSA is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or Staph aureus. What that means is that it's a variety of Staph aureus that is resistant to methicillin and a related group of antibiotics. That's important because those are, tend to be the antibiotics that we will use first when trying to treat an infection. Greater use and misuse of antibiotics increases the chance of the bacteria developing resistance. Well, methicillin was introduced in the late 1950s, and even the first year it was introduced, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus was detected. At that time, it wasn't felt to be a major clinical problem, but has emerged over the years since then, and at various times, for example, in the 1980s, and again more recently, it has become a much more relevant clinical problem. Fifty years ago, many of the patients in this intensive care unit would have died from their conditions. Now, modern medicine can save their lives. But these interventions also give superbugs a chance to spread. Controlling such infections is far from easy. I think the biggest challenge is rapid diagnosis. I think microbiology laboratories are still relying on very traditional methods. And what we need over the next two to five years is make that leap into the molecular area and use molecular diagnostic tests that will give us a more rapid result so that we can actually affect how a patient is treated more quickly. Thanks to pressure from patients, the government has introduced new standards of cleanliness in UK hospitals. 
The official goal is to halve the number of MRSA infections by 2008. But hospitals also have to meet government targets to reduce waiting times. So that means filling beds. More patients and more crowding increases the risk of superbug transmission. Environmental hygiene and hand hygiene are not the only issues. Antibiotics are one issue um, um, which have a pressure in generating resistance. Staffing levels are very important. And another critically important issue is bed occupancy. When you're running hospitals at near 100% bed occupancy, it really does undermine the most effective measures around infection control. Many patients in the UK now dread a hospital stay, fearing they will catch a life-threatening infection. MRSA and other killer bacteria thrive in the wards. We know what it takes to beat the superbugs. Better hygiene and safer medical practices are vital. The big challenge lies in getting hospitals to change their habits. So just how safe are today's hospitals? Joining me in the studio is Julie Storr from the World Alliance of Patient Safety, which is part of the World Health Organization. Julie, Britain's battle against the superbug. What's the score? I think we're seeing some progress. Um, as we are seeing already MRSA rates are coming down. There are still problems, but I think we're beginning to see progress in the UK. But what about other bacterial infections? Well, we've very recently in the last few years started to measure infections across the whole of the UK. So that in itself is a positive thing. And now we're measuring them. We have to make sure that we put in place um, all the things we can to bring these infections down. So. Hand washing, the importance of it, has been known since the 19th century. We're not talking about rocket science here. Why is hygiene still such a problem? It's clearly not just hygiene, not just hand hygiene, but that really is probably uh, it's much, much more um, important than many other measures. Um, in fact, many people describe it as the most important hand washing. thing. Hand washing. Um, clearly, we need to control antibiotics. We need to have other preventative practices, but the reason across the whole world, hand hygiene compliance by staff is a problem. It's not, not just a UK problem. But, but why? It sounds simple. It sounds the most simple action in the world to perform in healthcare. There are many things in our modern hospitals that have prevented staff from carrying it out effectively. Such um, as? busyness of the hospitals. In many, certainly in many um, developed countries, we've seen activity levels, numbers of patients coming through the door has increased. Um, we also know that perhaps training and education could be better, could be better in support of hand hygiene. So there's lots of different reasons why. But it's not just hand washing either that's a problem. I mean, there are other elements within hospitals. I mean, safety of transfusions, for example. Yeah, I mean, it, the. I am involved in uh, some global work to try and tackle hospital infections uh, in every one of the WHO's member states. And whilst central to what we're doing is hand hygiene, um, which you could describe as, as the doorway into safer practice, it's, it's like the, the starting point. We're also working with our colleagues in blood safety because of the, the real risks of blood transfusion and the WHO is doing some fantastic work in relation to that. We're working with colleagues in injection and immunisation safety. Again, uh, some fantastic work that Tr WHO Trying to reduce done. reuse of, yeah, of needles. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, we're just trying to work to look at cleanliness and hygiene in its broadest sense because all of those things, reuse of needles, safety with blood, safe water, they're all about hygiene, and hand hygiene is just one part of that, really. If this is a problem for hospitals in the developed world, I mean, in the developing, in developing world, it it's, must be an enormous challenge. There's so much emphasis on healthcare reform, rebuilding healthcare systems in poor countries now. Where does hygiene fit into that? Is that also been made a priority? In some countries uh, we're working very closely with, we've certainly managed to get this at the political level as a priority. Um, we have now 47 countries around the world that have signed a pledge committing to tackle hospital infections alongside all of the other things that they're doing. Um, I'm working very closely with Bangladesh. Their government uh, last year signed this pledge and as a result of that we're working with a big hospital that has many complex problems, but they see alongside all the other issues facing them, infection control, hand hygiene, as something they want to tackle. And how are they doing it? Well, 
unlike in the UK where the system itself is much more supportive of hand hygiene, so we don't have a problem particularly with sinks and towels and soap, the hospital I'm working with is in the process of installing sinks to provide running water so that staff in very busy wards can at least clean their hands with soap and water. The other thing we're doing, um, what we've done as part of this global patient safety challenge that I'm involved with is developed a recipe for a hand sanitizer which we are encouraging countries that have limited access in the marketplace to make, to make themselves to this very simple recipe and Bangladesh is do, doing just that. Is it, a, is it just a question of money to make this change? The, these, the clearly these products, these hand sanitizers do cost money but if I can give you an example in Hong Kong which is another place we're working very closely with using the WHO formula they've managed to produce a hundred mil bottle for less than 40 cents, US cents. Now in the UK that's considerably more expensive to buy a hundred mil bottles. So they've really, they've mass produced it, they're going to flood all the healthcare facilities, yeah. not literally, yeah, right. and make this available so that staff can carry it around with them, can have it at the end of their beds and, and, and use it easily and simply and kill the bugs. Thanks Julie. Join us after the break when we look at the introduction of a life-saving vaccine to some of the world's neediest children. Mm -hmm.